let's go. And I'm going to share my screen so that we can get in between this presentation right here. So here we go. So updating your 60 second professional introduction by myself. For me to you. Okay, so <clears throat> the first component that you need to understand, um, there's three, by the way, there are three, your professional past, your professional present, and your professional future. All of these things combined is a brief walkthrough of who you are professionally. And you're going to be, um, you're going to be able to communicate that in about 60 seconds because that is all you need to make a powerful and positive introduction that is really all you need if you say the right things to make a lasting impression on the listener on the person that um, is going to be your partner your business partner or somebody that has hiring power in your profession so the first thing is your professional past check out this um pokemon right here very uh it, the power level is is baby because these are your past can uh, include a lot of mistakes that you made right and so just like a baby we kind of you know stumble and learn from from those mistakes but you don't have to be ashamed for any of those so step one you must know your audience when you're developing this 60 second professional introduction, right? So knowing the unmet needs of whoever you're going to uh, speak to, knowing the unmet needs of that profession, right? Um, it's gonna require some background knowledge, a little bit of research on the industry or the department or the organization, the firm, or what have you, you're going to need to get brushed up on some information so that you understand where that industry is lacking and how you can fulfill that uh, unmet need or cover that hole. Um, so you definitely want to know what's needed. And you, and if you can share your past, your present, and your future in a way that's going to address that unmet need or solve that problem or reach that goal that it, that um, that industry needs, you're going to be good to go. And the way you do that is doing a little bit of research. So know your audience. Um, whenever you are talking about what you've done, the listener, the listener must be able to visualize it and also believe that you can do what you are saying for them as well. So you need to write this out, write out that that your professional past and your story or your first um, 20 seconds should be able to, um, they, you know, the listener needs to be able to not only visualize what you're saying, but see you doing it for them. So what are those characteristics? Um, the first thing you want to make sure you have are one or two strong highlights of your past that are that are relevant to your future endeavors. So um, I'm going to explain how, how this works, but this these, this is the first characteristic. You've got to have something strong in your past that you're going to connect to your now and to your future. Um, your 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 delivery now so the way you you want to communicate this if you're greeting that person for the first time you want to be energetic right you want to deliver a, a statement that's going to grasp them and keep their attention you don't want to walk up to them hi my name is such and such can you please listen you got a second you, no you know your value you know your worth you need to be excited about wanting to communicate that and keep that energy up at the beginning um, your past role should be intriguing. Uh, if your role or title is not, then speak to the specific duties. What I mean by that is some people might not be proud of the roles or the job titles that they had in the past, but that does not mean you should neglect some of those transferable skills that you can apply to uh, what you want to do moving forward. So um, you want to speak more towards 
the duties, the responsibilities, the, um, the, uh, the transferable skills if you don't have a past that lines up with what you are trying to do uh, or relevant to your future. So that's gonna help you out. All right, so you know the elements. How do you write one of these? How do you start this off? Just like you, you start off uh, any traditional um, introduction. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Brandon Harris. Right, so, you know, insert your name. Hi, my name is, and you, and you introduce yourself. It's as simple as that. But then you want to follow up with the second bullet point. Hi, my name is Brandon Harris. In the past, I've insert what you've done, or you can even state um, in my previous role as a insert your role, I've accomplished X, Y, Z. You want to follow up with a sentence to the uh, to the effect of in this experience, I've helped strengthen uh, this experience helped me strengthen transferable skills such as blah, 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 which are highly in demand in today's insert your industry. So I know there was a lot of blank this and insert that and this. So I'll give you an example of how, um, you know, I'll insert these, um, the, the material or the what into some of these statements. Hi, my name is Brandon Harris. In the past, I've worked in education for over 10 years and increased daily average attendance from 40% to 100%. Um, and I have an award that can attest to uh, those accomplishments. Um, this experience as an educator, as an educator in the K through 12 and after school programs has strengthened my uh, transferable skills today, which are highly in demand. Those, those transferable skills such as communication and inclusive speaking um, and also, so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm adding things in, I'm adding those skills in. I've mentioned some, uh, what I've done in the past. I've, I've even sprinkled in how long I've been doing it. Um, I mentioned the role and my role as a site coordinator or in my role as a, as a work readiness speaker, and, you know, so you just kind of insert and plug and play with that. So as a recap, how do you write those or what you, should you say? Definitely introduce yourself, right? Mention some highlights that are relevant to what you're trying to do. Be energetic, smile, make sure you, please remember to smile and um, try to, if you can't, if you're not too uh, excited about your specific role or title in your, in your professional past, speak to some of those duties that as people are listening to you, they can see you perform those same duties or perform those same skills while you work with or for them. All right, so now let's transition into the present. This power level is experienced because at this point in your time, you are um, more experienced in what you want to do. Uh, so notice the evolution between this Pokemon and this one, he's evolving, right? All right, so step two, you control your present. We can't control our past. Our past was our past, but it made us who we are today. So never discredit that. Take from it the transferable skills that you are using today. So what I mean by you control your present. You should professionally, you should work on professionally positioning yourself in ways that make you excited about bragging about yourself, right? So if you know that, if you can see yourself bragging about maybe volunteering for in, a, in, your, in your career, um, you know, if, if working in your dream field isn't realistic right now, finding volunteer opportunities, being an internship, mention just mention the field now the, your past was your past but you have this information in front of you right now to um, position yourself accordingly what i mean by that is don't do the stuff you did in the past if that's not where you want to go moving forward um if you know right now it could it's probably difficult it's, it's easier said than done me telling you well just do what do just work in the in the in the field that you want to work in that might not be, they might not be hiring like that, or might not be giving you paid opportunities. 
So therefore, look for some of those internships, look for some of those, um, those by the volunteer work where with under that same umbrella, under that same field of, 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 of that profession that you were that you're trying to dive into, you're still under that umbrella operating for the experience. You're getting paid through experience. You're showing that employer that you're willing to do this for free because you're passionate about it. And, that, and the way you're getting paid, you're getting paid through, you can get paid through experience, a letter of recommendation, right? You're, you're, you're giving your time and you're doing a great job and the, the your, your direct um, supervisor or your contact person sees you acting as if you're getting paid for it. So I need you to leverage that. I need you to leverage that experience and take advantage of that. I don't care if it's, it's just a couple of hours, four hours a week. Um, so specifically for my uh, apply research class, my students are uh, putting in hours, um, four hours a week towards a, a field that is relative to their degree. So you're leveraging that right now and you know what to do. So um, mention that current work, mention the work that is in demand uh, where you fulfilled an unmet need. So currently right now working with youth, supervising them, helping them out with their homework, I need you to quantify your results. How many students have you helped within in a week? In a week, how much have you done? Are you standing out from your uh, from other staff that are that are that is volunteering? How are you standing out from the pack? If the norm or the expectation is helping X amount of students, how are you exceeding that expectations so that you can stand out? I need you to mention that in that current 20, 20 second portion of your professional introduction. So how does that look? You have a similar to your past one to two strong highlights relevant to what you are trying to do moving forward. Um, now your tone or your delivery should uh, it should it should be diet, it should contrast your energetic, more happy go lucky tone that you had at the beginning. So um, this whole 60 second professional introduction. 20 seconds for your past, 20 seconds for your present, 20 seconds for your future. It should be dynamic so people aren't bored, right? So people, you don't want to speak in the same tone. So imagine my hand being the same tone, sounding all monotone, one tone, Bueller, Bueller, dry eyes, right? That can be kind of boring. So if I'm starting off energetic for my introduction, I want to move more into a serious, but I'm still smiling type of zone. So I might be a little bit more calm as, you know, I don't want to scare them away by, hi, my name is Brennan. You know, so I want to speak in a more serious yet uh, approachable tone, use some um, not too, not too many hand gestures, because at this point, this is the middle part of your professional introduction. You've already willed them in with being energetic and being and smiling, right? Now you want to tone it down a little bit and give um, a more, you know, a serious yet approachable delivery while you have their attention, you know, give them that eye contact, let them know what you're doing currently. Um, to to strengthen your your skills and so that you're you're looking at it's not some puppy wagging their tail like at the beginning but you're more so being received as somebody that should be taken seriously um so in you know, this one this last characteristic is your past role or duty should be impressive right so in the other one you, your past role should be intriguing, like, you know, just eye opening, like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, as you're talking about your professional present, this is your moment to impress them, right? To include certain things that your competition might may or may not be doing. So leverage the fact that you are in school, that you are working.